little journeys to the homes of prominent amateurs by andrew francis lockhart from the united amateur september nineteen fifteen this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org read by piotr natter among the many amateurs i have never met in the flesh and realness of life howard phillips lovecraft poet critic and student appeals to me as no other recent find in the circles of amateuria has ever appealed and lovecraft is a distinct find just why he holds a firm grip on my heart-strings is something of a mystery to me perhaps it is because of his wholesome ideas perhaps it is because he is a recluse content to nose among books of ancient lore perhaps it's because of his physical afflictions his love of things beautiful in life his ardent advocacy of temperance cleanliness and purity i don't know we disagree on many questions he criticizes my literary activities he smiles at my suffrage theories and disapproves of my language in chain lightning but i like him howard phillips lovecraft has an interesting history and this fact was known to official editor das when he asked me to take a little journey to the study home of the vice-president don't stint yourself for space was noted on the assignment tab and after glancing over the biographical notes before me i am sure that das has again exemplified his quiet humor during a serious moment lovecraft was born at four hundred fifty four angle street providence rhode island on august the twentieth eighteen ninety his nationality is anglo-american and under british law he can claim to be a british subject since he is a grandson in direct male line of a british subject not naturalized in the united states his ancestry is purely english on the paternal side he is a descendant of the lovecrafts a devonshire family which has furnished a great many clergymen to the church of england and the Olgoods of northumberland a history honored family of which several members have been knighted the Olgoods have been a military line and this may account for lovecraft's militarism and belief in the justice of war on the maternal side he is a typical yankee coming from east english stock which settled in rhode island about sixteen eighty lovecraft is a student of astronomy it is a domineering passion with him and this love was apparently inherited from his maternal grandmother roby phillips who studied it thoroughly in her youth at lapham seminar and whose collection of old astronomical books first interested him lovecraft came from pure blood stock and he is the last male descendant of that family in the united states with him the name will die in america he is unmarried as he was about to enter college at the age of eighteen his feeble health gave way and since then he has been physically incapacitated and rendered almost an invalid being thus deprived of his cherished hope to further his education and to prepare himself for a life of letters he has contented himself with his home which is just three squares from his birthplace and where he lives with his mother and his home life is ideal his personal library his haven of contentment contains more than fifteen hundred volumes many of them yellowed with age and crude examples of the printer's art among these treasured books may be found volumes which have passed through the various branches of his family some dating back to sixteen eighty one and seventeen o two and methinks i can see lovecraft poring over these time-stained bits of bookish lore as the monks of old followed the printed lines with quivering fingers in the taper's uncertain flickering light for lovecraft appeals to me as a bookworm one of those lovable mortals whose very existence seems to hang on the numbered pages of a heavy clumsy book his connection with organized amateur journalism is of recent date on the sixth of april nineteen fourteen his application for membership in the united amateur press association of america was forwarded to the secretary like a great many of the recruits lovecraft was completely ignored for several months in july of last year he became active he has proven to be an invaluable asset to the literary life of the association he is not a politician however his literary activities had been prosecuted many years before he had even heard of the united at the age of eight and one-half years 
he published the scientific gazette a weekly periodical written in pencil and issued in addition of four carbon copies this journal was devoted to the science of chemistry which was one of his earliest hobbies and ran from march eighteen ninety nine to february nineteen o four as in most cases my knowledge of chemistry was acquired after i had spent four years in high school and the fact that any boy should be interested in that study at the age of eight and one half years appeals to me as something out of the ordinary but lovecraft was not an ordinary boy his second and more ambitious venture was the rhode island journal of astronomy this was at first published as a weekly and later changed to a monthly publication this was carefully printed by hand and then duplicated on the hectograph and issued in lots of twenty-five copies the journal was issued from nineteen o three to nineteen o seven and contained the latest astronomical news rewritten from the original telegraphic reports issued from harvard university and seen at the lad observatory it also contained many of his original articles and forecasts of phenomena he owns a three-inch telescope of french make and aside from amateur journalism his one great hobby is astronomy at the age of sixteen he commenced writing monthly astronomical articles for the providence tribune and later changed to the evening news to which he still contributes during the present year he has contributed a complete elementary treatise on astronomy in serial form to the asheville north carolina gazette news besides contributing a great many poems and articles to the amateur press editing the conservative and assisting with the editorial work on the badger the appearance of mr lovecraft's work in the professional magazines is of common occurrence during the past year he has had charge of the bureau of public criticism in the united amateur where he has proven himself a just impartial and painstaking critic that he will achieve a great popularity in the world of amateur letters is a foregone conclusion and i do not think that i am indulging in extravagant praise in predicting a brilliant future for him in the professional field i am acquainted with howard phillips lovecraft only through correspondence i have never felt the flesh of his palm and yet i know he is a man every inch of him and that amateur journalism will be enriched and promoted to its highest plane through his kindly influence and literary leadership End of Little Journeys to the Homes of Prominent Amateurs by Edward Francis Lockhart